Welcome back, crypto enthusiasts. It's your boy, Crypto Danks, here with another banger talking about Casper price action, price prediction, short term, long term. We're going to just see what's going on. I got Crypto Queen Cami in the building. How you doing, Cam? I'm good. Thank you for having me. How are you? I am fantastic. Obviously, we've had some um, price maneuvering with caspa it's like a little slippery thing you know up and down the water slide got a little bit of action going on and uh let's just kind of talk about it chop it up and see what's going on you down down yeah, let's do it all right so today actually up two percent from where we launched on the day uh down though 14 percent for the week but on the month, still up 41%, not bad coming from 08 cents. Uh, and of course we have pushed up. I mean, it was a steady rise from about five cents. It's been consolidating between about four, almost five cents, four, eight down to, you know, four, 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 one ish at some point uh, in September, October. And then we just pushed straight up hitting uh, about 15 cents. And now we are consolidating over the day between uh, looks like 11.6 and 12.5 ish. So let's go ahead and open up the chart on trading view. I think you can see my screen, correct? All right. Yeah, I can see it. Okay, cool. So um, first of all, we're on the one hour chart. I'm gonna take away this indicator here. So what we have, I have this here. Let me fix this uh, right here on the market site for V. Okay, cool. So on the one hour chart, we had this pump, uh, obviously down from five cents, moved up over just a few days, maybe a week or so hitting all time highs, uh, reaching a total of 15.5 it looks like. And we've been range bound consolidating on this value area, closer towards the value area high, but definitely towards the point of control. So um, if you don't know what this is, this is the price volume, part, price fixed range volume indicator. Um, and it tells you the volume by price. Down here we have the volume by time which you can see down here. Um, and then we have the volume by price in this area. Now we are consolidating in what's called the point of control, which is the main price action. It's that white line that you see there. So due to that, the price has kind of been stuck around that area. Now we did move down a little bit and uh, moved into the mid 11s, 11.5 or so. But there's not enough price action in that area to really sustain it. So in my opinion, I thought, and I did some TA on this this morning, and it's been a few hours now, because we were heading down. But as you can see, we're starting to move back up. I think it's due to not having enough price volume in this area. What do you think, Cam? Yeah, it's wanted to, it wants to get kind of get sucked back up. And honestly, anytime that Casper drops a little bit, everybody's just like going crazy trying to buy more. So... Yeah, absolutely. Actually, I'm glad you said that because we can actually look at the order book. So uh, this is a cumulative order book. Um, even in the 12 cent range, we've got uh, $100,000 pretty much just kicking off anything serious at 12.6. And then as we move down into the 11s, mid 11s, low 11s, we've got half a million dollars on every single pip cumulatively. So it's looking like lots of limit orders are just pushing up the price. When I saw it this morning, there was about uh, 11, there was about $40 million in buy pressure between 11, four and 12 cents. So we've definitely triggered a lot of that uh, buy pressure. Now we have a little bit less, but it's still very significant. I mean, pretty much half a million to a million every single, every line or other line uh, on the buy order. And this is just Mexi, keep in mind. Lots of other exchanges are selling, slanging that Caspa because it is just flying out and people want a piece. Um, what do you think is gonna happen with Caspa over the next few days, weeks? 
uh, in the short term at least, where do you see CASPA um, price action? Because I can pull up, now obviously I sh probably should, to be fair, pull open the Fibonacci. Naturally, we would wanna see some type of price retracement if we were looking for a solid answer. And I keep coming up with the mid to low nines, which brings us in this parallel channel that I drew up right here. Um, how th th this is the thing, and sorry, I didn't let you answer. I asked you a question, but um, the thing is, we would need significant sell pressure with not enough buy pressure in order to fly down this area. Because you know, just as well as I do, that when there's not much sell, uh, not much volume, it's really easy to get sucked into the next value area, which is right here, because this is where the most price action is at, and it's kind of hard to see because I have the the uh, parallel channel, but if I took it away and I took the Fibonacci's away, you'd be able to see that this volume here is pretty much as much volume as it was up here. So in that area on the, not, what is this? This is nine, it's about nine cents flat. This whole area between eight, eight and nine, two, nine, three is the next value area. So what do you think the odds are? Are we gonna get down there or are we gonna be pushing back up and just ranging until we move back up? What's your opinion? Honestly, I've done kind of the same sort of TA and even before when we were um, around like the fives, the six, the seven, the eights. And every time it never really follows through just because um, there's so much buy pressure at the lower prices and it's becoming um, a coin that has been talked about a lot more on crypto Twitter. Like it's popping up a lot on my on my feed and more people are more people are talking about it so um a lot of people haven't been able to really get get their hands on it and obviously it's hard to get if you live in the united states if you don't have a vpn um so who, those people who can or are learning about vpns and stuff are uh, starting to kind of get their hands on it um so caspa doesn't really ever retrace that much like you can kind of see like from it's even like the long-term price chart it just kind of ranges for a little bit. It goes up and down a little bit. And then um, it just kind of shoots back up. That this that was the biggest retracement I think I've ever seen it do right there, like right in the middle. Um, but that was forever ago. That was so like, well, that's like April. at the at the one yeah, cent in the, in the one cent. Yeah. So after that, it's never, ever really retraced that much. And I feel like now that it's getting so much um, so many people talking about it. I feel like maybe more exchanges are going to keep buying it and buying it. And as we know, um, in order for them to be listed, they have to buy it in, at the, an open market, which is just going to keep pumping up the price. So um, it did pump up a lot. It hasn't really retraced much. But every time that Casper gets a little bit of a retracement, people just buy it like crazy. So I'm thinking probably we can range a little while longer around this around this range probably maybe like how we were today like today was the lowest we have seen it in a while um like around like the 11 11 cents um so i'm thinking it's probably just gonna re just range for for a little while and you we also saw the the um the order book how strong it is for the buys yeah. Um, so I'm thinking, I'm thinking ranging for a little while longer, um, because it does again, let's look at the sell, like how strong, how high are the sell orders? Like how big are they at the higher prices? I mean, we don't get any sell. Well, uh, we hit a hundred thousand at about 12, three, 12, four. Uh, the highest we have is yeah, there, it's not even that 300. big, it's like yeah. 300,000. Yeah. So like there's so much buy pressure. So I just feel like it's probably going to range for a while. Um, it's gonna. It will take a lot of really big sale orders to kind of break through that buy pressure. Um, so I'm thinking ranging, and that's kind of what Casper likes to do. It just ranges for a while, goes down a little bit, and then just randomly just decides to just shoot up like crazy. Absolutely. So I agree with you. However, we do have on the market side for B. If we open this up just a little bit. We did have some bullish momentum here, which was kind of pushing us up in this area as the money flow did kind of move up. Um, however- You see that money flow is looking kind of sus right now too. The money flow is I'm, really, really in the right right now, yeah. I was just about to say, now as we trend down, right, 
we moved out of bullishness on the momentum waves and we've got a deep, deep, deep anchor wave here. So um, along with that, we didn't have much money flowing in and you can see the volume is very low, right? Compared to back here, if we zoomed out, all this pressure, like as it was moving up, there was a lot of volume here, but now we have very little volume, all right, uh, on this side. And also we have very little volume on the price, the fixed price range, uh, the fixed range volume indicators. So, I mean, down in this area, there's just not much price action. There's not much volume at all over the time frame. So I don't see much happening as far as it moving down because there's just not enough volume to make it happen. Now there is money, like we said, flowing out of the market though. So this could thicken up. It does look like it wants to round out a little bit. So we're going to have to kind of see. Yeah. And the VWAP is moving up though. So it's, that's a little bullish, like the, yeah, on the, that true. little peak. So it's yeah. kind of going up. So it, it, it it's a little pre indicator that it could start kind of correcting a little bit. Absolutely. Yeah. I guess we'll just have to wait and see. Um, everyone's calling for a correction, but this is the thing they've been calling for a correction on Caspa since since it was like under four cents. Ever since it passed four cents, it hasn't really corrected significantly. When it hit 4.2 cents, it hit a high, it went down to like three, three I think was the lowest, and then it bounced back up. Then we blew up to like five and change, it came down to like four, one. So the most, this is the most fluctuation we've actually ever really had. Uh, I think in the beginning, we did have a point to where it went from like, uh, let's see, I think it went from, yeah, it went from, you can see it here, it went from five cents down to three, two. So five, two to three, two. So that's two cents. That's pretty much the biggest I've seen. And we're kind of getting the same thing here, right? We're getting the same thing here. We're getting, um, if we look, we're getting, let's see, so it's from 15.5 down, it's 25% down to 11.5. So that's the biggest uh, four cent swing of Caspa that we've seen so far. So this might be the dip, you know what I mean? So honestly, this is the biggest um, decline that we've seen or retracement that we've seen. And it just happens to be ranging in that retracement, right? So I think it's just marinating and either a, co a Coinbase or a tier one, Gemini, Kraken, uh, Binance, somebody's going to end up packing their bags or if they haven't already, uh, make a listing and a spot listing and the price is going to just fly. I really think this is just kind of twirling and marinating. Um, the And you, you touched on buying Caspa in the United States. If you don't want to use a VPN and buy on like Mexi or something like that, you can actually, as a U.S. citizen, buy on Uphold. You do have to KYC. You can buy Caspa and you can withdraw Caspa to your own custodial wallet. I recommend Tangem. If you just go to tangem.com, uh, and use crypto danks as the promo code. You'll be able to get yourself 10% off. Just go ahead and type in crypto danks and you'll get 10% off. I get the three card set that way in case you lose one or two, um, you'll have a backup and it's 100% secure and it's open source. So if anything happens to the company, it goes underground, they can just rewrite the code and you'll be able to access your funds. No issues, no funds lost. You're all good. So what do you think about price if we get a tier one listing in the next few months? What do you think about that? I mean, it would be crazy if they haven't already started buying um, uh, and they start buying pretty soon. I mean, it's they're going to need a lot of um, CASPA to sustain. So it's they are going to be the ones moving up the price. And then once people start buying and trading that, it's just going to skyrocket. Absolutely. So um, I agree, you know, they have to buy at this price, right? They have to buy at the market price if they haven't. Uh, if Coinbase, the Coinbase had wrapped Caspa as their, like you could buy on their Coinbase wallet, they're showing it. I don't know if they're showing it now. Let's see if Coinbase shows Caspa at all. 
And another thing is that everybody that, that knows about Caspa, they're not buying to trade. They're honestly, they're diamond handing this. Like they know about the technology, they know what it does. And nope, they're not trying to just hold it for like a two, three, four, five X. They, everybody who really understands it knows the power of it. Um, they're not going to just get rid of it unless it's one of the people that got into it like at the really beginning and they're going to already have made like a thousand X on it those people are probably gonna sell a little bit but the majority um, of people have been probably hearing about it since it was like two three four five cents and a lot of those are not they know and they're gonna hold it so yeah. it's not going the prices don't fluctuate that much on it it just kind of keeps and keeps going up because people are not selling caspa i agree but at the same time there are a lot of people that invest in stuff randomly they hear about caspa they don't do any research they bought it at 14 cents it's down to 12 cents they don't understand technical analysis they don't understand the technical tech like the tech behind the project they don't understand they have block deck uh coming um they've got the uh i'm sorry the dag night coming they've got the rust rewrite on the way uh like i had a friend you know um a local friend he bought caspa and i told him i was like buy caspa and hold it and he bought it at four cents and then or he bought it at like four cents it went up to five cents and it went down to like four seven and he sold you know he's like yeah i made a thousand bucks i'm like dude like what are you talking about and now he's calling me asking me should i buy should i buy and i'm like dude you guys you guys if you're gonna buy caspa just keep buying stop trying to make short-term gains caspa is not a short-term gain crypto this is a life-changing opportunity so take what you have in front of you and hold on to it and keep packing your bags at lower prices if we're going to be ranging like this for a while which it looks like we might be until something bullish comes out like finishing dag night and moving into that actual protocol or finishing rust or both that's going to be extremely bullish because we'll be moving from one block per second to 10 blocks per second which means we'll be going from 400 from 400 transactions per second to 4,000. so that's a very, very big thing. Uh, once that happens, it's off to the races from there. So I see Caspa, once we break out of this range, if we don't fall down to nine cents, easily surpassing 20, 25 cents, maybe even kissing 30 to 35 cents, and then maybe finding a range somewhere around the 20 cent area, maybe 19 or so. So we'll have to see what happens. Uh, Crypto Queen, Cami, thank you for joining me. And uh, it was a pleasure, thank you so much. Thank you. All right, we'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.